You are now listening to Cyber Time Bite, hosted by me, Stephen Clark. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey there, everybody. It's your boy, Steve. Once again, for Cyber Time Bite, episode 138. That that is that is crazy. Uh, I always say it all the time because I mean I'm even astonished I'm past a hundred. <laughs> I mean that is just man. But yeah, anyway, um, today I have someone on who is really cool, really awesome. Does a lot of things in art. Does a lot of uh, sending of art. Um, I don't know if he does commissions, but fig- or he probably does. But we'll figure that out today. He, he he's a really cool person. He's from the he's from the north. I almost said the south. I'm sorry. <laughs> if anyone from Canada is listening, the south. But if anyone in America, the north. <laughs> today, I am with Earth Drop Seth. Today. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. How how you, how is uh how's life? How's everything going? It's going good. I mean. I've I've stayed away from uh, the COVID, and obviously this is this is really awesome. You're you're having me on this. This is uh, it's not my first interview per se, but it's my first podcast. So it's it's really awesome, and it's a it's a step in the right direction towards you know making ourselves bigger and well known. So it's really awesome, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Hey hey, it's no problem, man. I mean, like I that's why I. That's why I do this podcast, really, because, you know, I do it for, like, people like you and people in pretty much the cosplay community at this point, because I literally had a lot of cosplayers on this podcast, and hopefully they get some recognition or some no no notoriety or credibility from my podcast, too. That'd be really cool. Yeah, I was watching a, a, quite a few of them just to kind of get a few view of the podcast, and I, I was... Just for a second on some of them, I was just like lost in the content, just listening. So it was definitely something that I was willing to hop on here and come with because it was something that seemed really cool and really creative. And I mean, you do a really good job at it. So I'm excited. Hey, thanks, man. So what I'm on, I guess the first thing I really want to ask is that like, like, you know, I was talking about the cosplay community and all that stuff. So like, do you think, do you consider cosplay like, a different kind of art, like an art that you would do that you see yourself doing and that you would commission yourself, just commission something. How are you saying that you would ask commissions from to get for, I guess I can, it's how you, I can word it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a really interesting question. Do I find cosplay? Yeah. I mean, I think I do because it's a type of performing art in itself, I mean, you're dressing up and you're becoming, you know, that character and that person, so that in itself is a a performing art, and then on top of that, you have to create the costume and the persona, and you have to, you know, actually, like, look like it, so even in form of it, it appears to be artwork, too, Um, and as far as myself, I haven't ever really thought of it, but as a child, I mean, I, I always, you know, dressed up as, you know, Jedis or, you know, different characters that I thought were just, like, super cool to me and, you know, pretended to be them, but I haven't, you know, as an adult, been able to have that experience quite yet, and honestly, I didn't even know that it was that the convention, like, those types of things were an actual thing until probably let's say I started collecting artwork six years ago. So maybe like five or four years ago or so when the convention, I think came to Minneapolis, if I, if I remember correctly, if it wasn't in either just like an anime convention or something like that. And then that's when I started really getting looking into, you know, that side of the artwork or cosplay, you know, and seeing it. So, and then obviously, you know, what's happened with, COVID and stuff has hit, so I haven't really had the biggest chance to be able to get into it, but it's definitely something that has, you know, interested me in the past, and I've, I've thought about, you know, doing those types of things, yeah. 
Yeah, because I because I feel if you go to the convention, Artist Alley would be your jam. <laughs> Artist Alley, huh? Yeah, I don't you, think I've ever heard of them. Yeah, no, it's not it's not a it's not like a a um a band or anything. There's a uh, when you go to conventions, they have like the vendor hall, and then they have the artist alley, which is oh nothing. okay. So you're talking about like an actual like an alleyway where artists are at. Okay, yeah, it's kind of like how do I how do I explain? It? It's kind of like there's a section at the convention where it's it's kind of like when you're going. I guess I can compare it to a grocery store because it's like there's aisles. So I mean, like you go up the aisle, and you and if you're one, if you're an artist, a hardcore artist like you are, you would you would like. There's aisles of artists. Like it's nothing but famous artists, low key artists. Um, they can be. It doesn't matter what level they fluctuate on. They could be someone from like that's really famous to someone who's not so famous to someone who's mildly famous. You know, it could be like all of that. And there's just rows, and you can just go up and down the rows like you're at the grocery store and just look at every single one. And if anything picks out your eye, you can be like, "Ooh, I can make. I want to commission that, or I want to buy that, or." It's like yeah, it's wow. it really it really is something that you would be interested in, and if you want to ever get into it, it's always open for you to to get to be part of it. Yeah, are th- uh, that's that's like a type of thing that's at ev- every type of convention, or yeah, it's a yeah, it's at every convention I've been to. Oh, I believe yeah. it's at every convention because, um, you know, if I can list a few, um. Anime Midwest has it, Count Out Delete has it, C2E2 has it, um, every convention I've basically been to has it, so. Yeah, that's cool, I mean, I've heard, I've definitely heard of, like, uh, like, art expos before, where it's been just strictly artists, but I didn't, I didn't even, had no idea that even cosplay even went down, like, that type of, for lack of a better word, alley, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. so, that's, that's really cool, yeah something that I should definitely check out because I'm I wasn't like the biggest into per se anime as I was growing up mm-hmm. but I'm sure there's way more than just strictly anime at those types of things so yeah because um because you know when you go to an anime convention or a comic con whatever you prefer um they all have our Sally by the way no matter if it's um anime convention or comic con or whatever but um but yeah, when you go to those kind of conventions, there's always going to be the vendor hall, which the artist alley's in the vendor hall, but there's the vendors who are selling all their stuff, and then there's strictly a section made for the artists. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I'm, I'd be really curious to know if any of the artists that I follow have ever been to any of those things or done any of those events. I'm sure they had. I'm pretty sure they either dipped their toes into it or they're still doing it now pre post or COVID, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Or it'd be interesting to even something to, you know, get up on my channel, go to, go to one of those things and like film a art alley and, and, and check it out or an artist alley and, you know, upload something like that. That would be really cool. Yeah. Like I think, yeah, I think that'd be really cool. And if you lived like in the same area as me, we can like do like, we, we can like just do a vlog of, like we can just go to conventions and film the artist alley and do like a video on each artist alley, and then like at the end of the year we can freaking be like, oh, this artist alley was great because I had a, great, a lot of great artists and all that stuff, and we could pair each of them from each convention that we've been to throughout the year. Yeah, I'd love that. If I was ever, yeah, if I was ever in town, like either you know that or another one that you were coming to, if you were ever coming here, you know, I'd I'd love to meet up and you you at least show me the the ropes, and then we could, you know, get something filmed like that. That'd be really cool. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, when when COVID's over and they do another convention up there, um, I don't know, I don't know what convention is near where you live, but I hear, but I know a few conventions that happen up there, like Anime Detour and, uh, it, I think Minicon, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, I wanted to say that there was like a Comic Con or a Minicon or something that came uh, either two or three years ago, something like that. But yeah, I mean, when COVID's over, make sure you should hit up one of them and there and just check out their R Sally and just check out the convention scene as a whole. It's really a fascinating experience. It's like nothing you ever experienced before. <laughs> yeah, that that's yeah, that sounds wild. Like I said, I've, yeah, I've been at something that's probably dumbed down a little bit of that, but to to be at the full experience, that would be something else. Um, I, I guess when it comes to R I wanted to bring up. Um, 
I actually met um, the artist who made uh, Rampage, the video game. Oh, okay. And I actually took a photo of him, which is pretty cool. I don't think I'm familiar with the actual artist himself, but I know that. You're talking about the video game itself, right? Yeah, the the game where your giant yeah, monsters yeah. turn the buildings, yeah. Yeah, it's like a... It's kind of cartoonish, right? Like a sky, side-scroller? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not familiar with the artist himself, but I have seen, yeah, the artwork. Yeah, he his um I met the artist and he he was he was really nice. He was really cool. Yeah, that's awesome. I I follow a lot of uh like acrylic and like actual uh painting artists, but I I really have to, you know, look into specific artists that create like the the video games that I play like every single day and stuff like that. Yeah, spe- yeah, speaking of arts and stuff that you follow, you know, you being art drop as your as your uh, YouTube channel yeah. would go. Like like I I guess we should start it way back and then it would lead into that question. Is that like how did you get how did you get so fascinated in collecting and filming and and blogging about art? Like where did it where did that I mean, obviously art is a worldly thing and then we all know about it uh, from music to paintings to everything but how did it become such a fixation to your life to make a youtube and all everything about it right yes yeah. so uh well the the filming aspect of it i had always taken like just small filming or editing classes in high school and college and stuff and i didn't really ever think to like take it into a degree or anything like that it was just something cool that i really enjoyed doing and so when I graduated from college I just because I didn't I graduated with my AA so I don't really have like a degree specifically in any area so I wasn't really sure you know what I was going to do or where I was going to you know go with it so that's when I kind of just took time off and just you know started doing things for myself and trying to figure out where I was going to be going and uh my buddy actually started introducing me into like music festivals and concerts and stuff like that. And so we started going to like a few different shows and concerts and stuff together. And that's when I started noticing that he was collecting a lot of artwork and he was like wearing shirts that were just like super colorful and had artists all over them and was wearing pins on his hat and stuff like that. And I was really just like, you know, this is this is cool, but this isn't, you know, anything that I've really ever been introduced to, and my parents have had cool artwork before, but I, you know, haven't really ever dove all the way into it, um, and so when we were actually hanging out, he introduced me, he just gifted me my first pin, and was, you know, said, this is yours, you can have it, I, it's something that I collect, and I don't expect you to start <laughs> collecting, which is funny to think of now. Um, but, he, you know, he was just like, you can have this, and it's yours. And so then, flash forward maybe a, a year or so, I didn't really think of anything of it, but then um, we were at a store, and I had seen that they had pins laid out in their front display case, and I was like, well, I have this other pin at home, so, you know, maybe I should grab a, a few more because they, you know, really interest me. And the one he had given me was just, like, a, it was just a Rubik's Cube. And mm-hmm. I was like, okay, well, this isn't, you know, really any artwork, but it's an interest that I have. So I'm going to start, you know, trying to find things that interest me. And so I, I think I got a few different uh, music artists that I listened to and, like, places I had been to, but nothing that was really, like, an artist's piece of artwork. Yeah. Um, and so I kind of just started, like, looking around on, like, different websites for different pieces of, you know, pins and stuff like that that I was looking for, and then that's when I started running into actual artist designs of pins. And I was like, well, these are... And I think that's... Excuse me, I think that's when I ran into um, an artist, Aaron Brooks, and I found one of his pins that was shaped like a moon, and it had, like, some mushrooms all over it. And I was like, well, you know, this isn't 
something that really interests me, but it looks really cool. And so I ended up purchasing it, and it ended up sitting on my pin board with the rest of my pins for, like, a, a, a while. Um, and then one of my friends had, not not the same friend, but a different one had told me, he was like, oh, you, you have this pin? You have this artist? You know of him? And I was like, no, I have no idea who this guy is. I just <laughs> bought the pin, and I thought it looked cool, you know? And so then he told me about the artist and told me about Aaron Brooks, and I started following Aaron Brooks for... A, about a year or so and you know bought a few of his pins and got into a group called Pin Nation on Facebook and so I was kind of developing you know a sense for the artwork um I was seeing different artists and stuff like that but the main artist that I followed was Aaron Brooks um and then flash forward a little bit further and it turns out that Aaron Brooks was doing an art show at the Cannabis Cup on 420 in, I think, 2016, maybe, Mm -hmm. um, or 15. And so I was dating somebody at the time, and we we just decided on a spur, let's go to the Cannabis Cup to go see this artist that we were following and and have a fun time in in Denver and just hang out. And we ended up showing up at the art show, meeting the artist, taking pictures with him, and and getting our first painting ever from him. And that was kind of the spot where I was like, wow, this is really cool, because it was the first piece of handmade, one-of-a-kind piece of artwork that I had ever owned. And it was we, we spent a little bit more money on it than we probably wanted to, but yeah. it turns out that at this point in time, that piece of artwork you know, has appreciated in value now, so <laughs> <laughs> something that I didn't even really think of at that point. Um, but we just we bought it and enjoyed it, and then you know, at that point, um, there was a few different artists at that art show, so I got, you know, interested in them, um, and I just, you know, started collecting artwork, um, and then my buddy who I knew who who did a lot of art, I was hanging out with him, and I kind of realized that I'm in all of these different art groups and pin groups, and all of these artists are, like, doing pretty well just for being on, you know, Facebook, so I, I introduced my buddy to all these different pin groups and kind of showed him around, you know, around the groups and stuff. And he was like, you know, this is something that maybe I, I could do because before that he was just on Instagram. So at that point I was like, you know, I'll, I'll start up this Facebook for you, this Facebook group for you and we'll see how it goes. And it actually started doing pretty well. I had to promote it for a little while, you know, and get it, get it up and going, but it, it's, started doing really well and it's doing you know pretty well now um and so at that point I was like well I'm I'm ahead of an admin of this art group that's doing pretty well I collect all this artwork I have you know one of our kind pieces of artwork you know and and people are asking me all the time on these pages you know can I see your pieces of artwork can I you know see what painting you have can I you know because I've shown them off before but I I don't obviously like to, you know, boast about it, so I'm not going to post all my artwork all the time, you know, and be yeah. the, that guy. But I was, you know, people were asking me, so I was like, well, how how can I get this out to people and show them my artwork without having to kind of brag about it all the time or boast about it all the time? And so that's when I started thinking, well, I'll just start filming myself because I, I – enjoy filming and art and editing and stuff. I find it a really cool hobby. So I just decided at that point, I'll just film myself and upload it. And whoever wants to watch it can watch it. And if people don't want to watch it, I'm not going to po- you know, promote it or boast about it or anything. But if people want to see it, then they have an avenue that they can go to and, and check it out. And so I did my first unboxing video and that was just on my <laughs> little tiny iPhone and I edited everything right on my iPhone and I didn't use actual software on my computer um, because I didn't have one at the time. So I just did a short little unboxing video and uploaded it and everybody you know, was like, wow, this is really cool because nobody had actually done anything like that at the time. And this was three years ago or so and I had been collecting for about three years at that point and I didn't see anybody posting about like the pins that they were collecting specifically because you know you see those videos on YouTube of like unbox therapy and like people who do unboxing videos but nobody specifically in kind of our 
groups that were doing unboxing stuff and so I was like, you know, I'll just like start opening some stuff that I'm receiving and if people want to watch it, they'll watch it and that's kind of where the channel started and from there I started doing some like art shows that I was going to cuz I was like, well if I'm going to experience this art show, you know, why wouldn't other people or, you know, so I started uploading that kind of stuff and then a lot of people were, you know, honestly asking me, you know, when I was shipping stuff out and this is where that packaging video came from because I was shipping stuff out and people were like, yeah. wow, you, you you do this so quick. You get me tracking numbers so fast. You, you you know, package your stuff so well. And I was like, well, you know, you have to – I was typing it all out to them. You have to go to PayPal, do this, do this, do this. And I was like, you know, I might as well just make a video about it. And so, you know, like I said, that's that, – we mentioned that before, but I – it's one of my most popular videos now, and I, I barely even promote it to people because people just come to the channel and try to find it, and, and you know, they, they do all that research on their own. So it's it's kind of been a little bit of a journey, and obviously COVID's uh, been slowing down the art shows and stuff, but I really enjoy doing it as, like, a hobby, and I honestly never thought that it would, you know, I only have I, a little over 500 subscribers. I didn't ever think that it would even get to that I th thought that I was just uploading <laughs> some videos for my friends and families to watch and you know I I set those small goals I like I'd, I'd like to maybe try to get to like a thousand subscribers by the end of the year but it's nothing where I'm like if it doesn't happen then I'm gonna be you know upset at myself or anything like that I, it's really just like a really cool hobby that I enjoy doing and I'm I'm really kind of stoked that other people are finding it enjoyable as well well I, want, well, I want to say thank you for uploading that shipping video or else I would have been screwed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. But but no, I mean, something I want to also bring up is that you, pro you probably know about this, but you know about the band Tool, right? And yeah, yeah. I think the lead singer is an artist, I think. Yeah, Maynard. Yeah, yeah. he does a lot of different different things. He has <laughs> artwork and wine and yeah, he has a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, because because um, it's funny in Guitar Hero Guitar Hero World Tour, the game because I'm a huge Guitar Hero freak too. Um, in that game, they have a they have a they have a uh, a background in that game because you know how the in the game it's usually just like your band and the stage and the whole background and all that stuff. They 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 made a whole stage just for Tool because they because they because they put because they put like a venue in the game where it was nothing but tool songs and they yeah and they made it and they made something just for tool where it was nothing but his artwork and it was it was his artwork in motion oh okay yeah i'm i'm wondering if that was maynard's work or if that was alex gray's work but either way i i definitely that's a flashback that's uh i i remember what you're talking about guitar hero 2 and yeah, that's <laughs> that's a flashback for sure. But yeah, tools tools work has been a really like really inspirational for me. Um, I actually just started putting together like a pin a tool pin group because a lot of people have been uh, like making tools artwork or Alex Gray's artwork into pins and like producing them. And it's it's kind of crazy actually that that artwork is like really 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 popular and a lot of people collect it and it goes for you know a lot of money and it's it's funny to think that back during those Guitar Hero two days that nobody probably thought that they were going to be as popular or you know the artwork was going to be as popular either as as it was so that's funny that you bring that up yeah because it was so. Because I, because I remember, because I remember, like, that was a big deal when that game came out. That was a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. And that, and that was, and that was crazy. I mean, like, I have so many. I mean, on top of that, though, I also have so many friends that are artists, like, to do art, and it, and I support them obviously because you know I support all my friends who are artists, and I support your art because you're pretty, you're pretty awesome, and I love your channel. Yeah, I appreciate that. So I mean, like, do you take do you for for everyone listening, and so you can just get this out of the way, so people don't go bragging about you all the time if you haven't already. Um, do you take commissions? 
Um, well, it's kind of from for me. Um, I'm I'm not like a huge creator of actual paintings themselves, um, but any time that anybody wants to do any type of filming for artwork or has an event that they want to do or anything like that, I am more than down to go to their event and check out their event and film for them. Or if anybody has ever, uh, I've had a few times actually on my channel, I, a few times where I haven't announced it, but um, some artists have sent me artwork to kind of commission me to, you know, open it on my channel and, you know, to show off, you know, mm -hmm. and when it comes to that kind of stuff, obviously it's, it has to be like artists that I already know or collect or really like their artwork or stuff like that. Cause I'm not just going to put on anybody's artwork. But, um, so as far as commissions go, I'm, I'm not one to be contacted if you want like a painting like that, but mm -hmm. I have the ability to reach out to any of these other artists that I know and I'm in pretty close contact with them too. So if anybody's looking for, you know, an actual painting themselves. I know quite a few artists that are more than willing to put out commissions. And if anybody's looking for actual videography or editing or wants me to show up to their show or anything like that, that that's the type of commission where I, I would be, yes, more more than willing to, you know, expand out. And I've had a few few friends where they've just been like, yo, I'm having this event. If you want to come film, then that'll be, you know showing off my show, but then also you're going to get to show off your, you know, skills and editing and stuff, you know, through filming. So, um, but also I am, I am, you know, a, a side artist where I like to, as a hobby paint and, and do different, uh, digital designs and stuff like that for people. So if anybody has any type of that, yeah, they can always reach out to me and, and I'm more than willing to, Hang, hang out or you know talk talk about stuff like that and even if it's like like this you know you, you didn't pay me to do this podcast and we're just you know hanging out chilling so I it, this I wouldn't consider this like really a commission but if anybody ever wants to collab or do anything like that too I'm more than willing to do that yeah yeah that's 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 pretty awesome you know just your support like like an art like an artist supporting art other artists thing yeah that's pretty cool yeah that was actually one of yeah when I went to my first Minneapolis art show because they would do one here every every year I was I the only thing I put in the descriptions really were you know just just those artists there because I I didn't really know what else to put I was like these are all I all I did was go and film their artwork and I didn't that that specific time I didn't actually purchase anything so the only thing that I'm trying to you know do is you know get their artwork out there and get them get them more known. So like, so like uh, when when it comes when it comes to the to the artwork that you wear from like you know because I saw the video that you uploaded of you like like um I I don't think it was everything I think you separated it but like you had like oh you, yeah uh, ten ten different artists shown through clothing or something like that yeah like you had the, you had like ten like you had like ten or some you had like a huge thing on you just unzipped it and showed the next one unzipped showed the next <laughs> one like like yeah. out of all of that like what what of in the ones that you had shown on video and the ones you have shown on video out of everything that you own which one's your favorite if you had if you um had to pick that. or when I'm you were in my stuff? closet right now <laughs> um i have a, a lot of shirts um I would say I probably wear I probably wear the most of um Nick DeFabio's artwork, um Ben Ebony's artwork mm -hmm. and probably um Signature's artwork. Those are probably some of the three most popular and I, all of those artists I have either represented on my channel or I have like links of them to them on my channel or in my Facebook page and stuff like that. So those are all easily found artists that, you know, they're, they aren't <laughs> small artists. They're, they're pretty well known. So I would say, yeah, Nick DeFabio signature or Ben Ebony is probably some of the most popular artists that I follow. And, and uh, honestly, it's, it's kind of weird because you would think that wearing really like 
outspoken, you know, like crazy monsters or like really colorful artwork, like wearing it around, you would think you would get like some weird, you know, stares or people are think like you're on drugs or something like that. But honestly, it, it's, it's not people stop me and they're like, wow, this is really cool artwork. Where do you, where do you follow this artist from? Where do you, you know, find this stuff? And it's cool because it's just like a conversation starter. So it, it really is just awesome to be able to wear the artwork around instead of having it <laughs> sit at home hanging on my walls. Yeah. Because, because I was going to, because I was going to ask, I, I was going to ask, I mean, like, I mean, since you wear that kind of stuff, like what, how do you feel when, when you just like go to like, I don't want to say just like Walmart, but I mean, like, <laughs> like if you like go to like Hot Topic or something, you just get a t-shirt with something that you like on it. Like, do you, do you, is that like, do you, is that, are you like, I'll put that on my good or are you like, it needs to be more flashy than that? Like it has to be like something more like. Like, are you that kind of person, or are you just like, I'll just wear anything because I, if it's comfortable or whatever? Yeah, for the most part, it's it's kind of what I'm feeling. Um, most of the artist's clothing that I wear are, like, silky, really breathable, you know, clothing. So that's kind of, most of the time, I just, like, lounge out and that stuff. And then if I have to go to the out of the house, I just won't really change or just, you know. But uh, it's, it, yeah, it's not something where I'm, like... Uh, crazily outspoken where I don't have just plain normal clothes, you know? I, I wear jeans and stuff like that, too. But mm -hmm. uh, I would say, honestly, I would say probably 75% of my closet is artist ar artwork. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And so, so like, I, as you know, there's, um, I don't know if everyone has gone through this, but I'm pretty sure once, I'm pretty sure there's, like, <clears throat> an instant an incident where probably someone went through this, but like, has there ever been anyone who's came up to you, right? And you're wearing your nice flashy artwork clothing and, and, and they, and they were just like, not saying they were completely nuts, but they were like, like it was kind of creepy how the way they approached you and they were asking you about, it. like, it was like weird. Like, have you gone through anything like that? Um, I don't, I, I don't know if I would per se weird, um, but I have had some people, uh, kind of misinterpret what the artwork should be or how it should kind of be. Cause I, artwork is hard because everybody interprets it a different way. So some people could see a flower and absolutely love it. And some people could see a flower and absolutely for some reason hate it. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so it's, it's kind of, it's hard when I wear the artwork out to you know, I sometimes I will uh, if if I feel like it's like a creepy monster or something like that, and I'm going to uh, you know somewhere that might have like more children around or something like that. I might you know change it up a little bit, um, but I've I've never really had like someone per se like come up to me and be like yo, your shirt's so stupid, or, like, you know, like, hate me for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I, I've gotten, you know, some looks for it at some points, or, like, uh, it. it's only ever happened once, but one person noticed who the actual artist was, and they, I guess, hadn't had, like, such a good experience with that artist before, so they, they were like, oh, I can't believe you're wearing that artist's piece of artwork, you know, but... <laughs> That's that's their own personal experience, so I can't really help that you know they they didn't really have a good experience. But that's probably the only time that I've ever had like a negative experience with my piece of artwork. Yeah, because um, yeah, because like because like uh, what's it called um, because like when it comes to me and my artist friends, I mean like I like. Like I like I bought like art off a friend of mine who does art. I like they do. Going back to going back to the first question, pins. <laughs> sure. Yeah, my friend made pins, right? And it's like, and it's like one's just nothing but red crystals with a black background, and another one is like, it's like a hat or whatever. Like anyway, like she made like all this all these pins, and I bought them and I put them on my vest, which has all my pins on it because I collect pins as well. Um. And like, and 
they're not all like original like made by artists that I commissioned or I bought off the artist alley from a convention. Like half of them are from Hot Topic, I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I know those ones. <laughs> yeah, so so like I bought all of those and I put them on my vest and um and you know, like and I have a few patches too. Which speaking of speaking of which, do you like it, do you think patches are also art if it has art on them or do you think like it's just like something that you're not into, like not the patch? thing yeah no i actually have uh a few patches i haven't been able to find anything that i'm willing to commit to sticking them to quite yet um but i've noticed that if if you just like take a a patch and put it like inside of like a small picture frame or something like that it works really well as like a cool piece of artwork that you can hang up on the wall until you figure out you know what you want to stick it to or what you you know where you want to put the patch, but I yeah I have a few few different pieces of artwork that are patches. That um, one of them is actually a like a custom patch that somebody you know uh, had their own machine and made. So yeah, no, I definitely think that patches are artwork. You I don't know if this is a real thing, and if it is, it, you should totally get on this. But um, uh, if they if your favorite artist like if there's like like I don't I'm not saying Tops would do it, but like. If there, you should like correct. There should be like trading cards for for just artists, and then they can make art, and they can be turned into a trading card, and you can collect them like you're collecting baseball cards and put them in a binder. I feel like that. Would but wouldn't that be awesome? <clears throat> yeah, I've actually I've seen a few. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen like on Instagram where like people will take like Pokemon cards and they'll turn like the the wording and like the bottom part and they'll make it into a full art card. Yeah, and I've seen like you know, artists turn cards into artwork, but I've never, yeah, that's really interesting. I've never heard of an artist producing their own set of cards with their own artwork on it. It's a really interesting concept. Yeah, because, because, because that, that would be cool for you. Cause then you can like go to Walmart or office max or whatever, buy a binder, buy the little pages that you put the baseball cards in. And then you can just start collecting these cards from your favorite artists with their artwork on it and be like, Hey, this is all the work from my favorite artist. You want to see it? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be like having a little picture frame of, you know, and you can have like a different page for each artist. Yeah. Huh? I'll have to bring that up to, you know, some of the artists that I know. That's really cool. Yeah, because um, because I, that's what I do with wrestling training cards. So I collect the, I collect those wrestling training cards from the store, and I just buy them and I put them in the sleeves, and I have the pages on pages of them and everything. Yeah, those are. I mean, those are collectibles in and of themselves too. I know, but it's not really a it's not really an art form, but it's something. <laughs> yeah, I, I pers- yeah. I'm a I'm a collector of all types of things, but uh, yeah, I would say that art is probably the the biggest form. I'm surprised that they haven't turned ty- uh, you know done done a type of artwork on sports cards. That's it's kind of interesting to me that they haven't crossed over those two avenues. Well, I'm I'm sure it's been done, but we just haven't really. It hasn't really been well spoken out enough that we've been like, oh, there it is. You know. Yeah, true. Yeah, you're probably right about that. It's probably it's probably been done in baseball cards, most definitely, because baseball cards are the, I think the more the most high selling kind of trading card there is, next to like football and hockey and anything else. Yeah, I guess I was more yeah more so just saying anything that I've seen before. I'm sure you're right. They've 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 had to have done that in all of the years that they've done trading cards. Or maybe in basketball too, because basketball brings in a lot of different brings in a lot of different cultures. Yeah, yeah, you're. It's probably more basketball, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did it on both of them. So, so you said you're a gamer, right? Or you're sort of yeah. Gamer. Now, now this is. <laughs> I know this is going to sound pretty obvious, but like I don't know if you're in the fighting games, but do you? But do you, but since you're art drop, do you play art of fighting? <laughs> I. No, I, I don't think I've even ever heard of that game. Yeah, it's a it's a fighting game for the Neo Geo. If you ever heard of that, um, if you have you heard of the Neo Geo before? No, is that a system? Oh yeah. Now I got now I got to tell you something about this system and everyone. Yeah, and these, I'm interested. Yeah, these are facts. Um, so, so the Neo Geo, you can 
I'm pretty sure you had no one grown up owning it because because the thing cost over like it was expensive. It was like I think like not one million but a thousand dollars a pop. Oh jeez! Like the thing was really expensive because um it had, because it was basically the, because there was an arcade machine of it called the AES no no the MVS the MVS was the arcade machine and it was a big red machine. And it can, and depending on how big it was, it can hold like up to I think the most six games at a time. And there was a button that you press to, to flip through the games. And, huh. And I think it went from, if I remember correctly, I think it goes from six down to just measly one. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Oh, I'm, I'm googling that. Oh yeah, that's a big like arcade system. That's wild. Yeah, that there's that. But then, but then in, uh, but then soon after that got popular, they made a home edition called the AES, which is basically they took the board from that machine and they put a, a case around it so you can play it at home. And the console itself was probably just as expensive. It was probably just as much if you wanted to buy the real arcade machine. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, it's got like the arcade controller next to it with all four of the buttons and the little analog stick. Uh-huh. I've, yeah, I've never seen the system before. It's so cool, and the, and not only was the not only was the console expensive, the games were also expensive. <laughs> wow! Because yeah, it, I don't know if you're seeing it, but the cartridges are huge. Yeah, they look like books. <laughs> yeah, and the um, in the games, I believe were like the the really. I think they were like I don't want to say. I think they were like five hundred a pop. I think I don't even remember. <laughs> Oh my gosh! How did anybody ever afford these back then? You had to be rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah, this one I'm looking at is like twenty five thousand dollars. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, man, that that thing got expensive. That, that's why there's that's why there's so many alternatives to it these days. Like there's like like the Neo Geo company made like so many alternative systems, so you didn't have to pay that price. Like. Like they made the Neo Geo X, which was pretty much the Nintendo Switch before Nintendo Switch was a thing. Um, oh yeah, I see that here. Yeah, it's like a handheld piece. Yeah, and then and then they and then they released the the Neo Geo Mini, which was basically uh, it looked like the the real thing, but it was really tiny. Um, uh-huh. And then and then the most recent thing they released, like that's recent is that they released like a i don't know if you know about arcade one up but um it's they're basically like home arcade consoles that you build yourself and they're like half the size of the real oh, yeah, thing. yeah 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 no i totally know what you're talking about yeah neo geo there's a neo geo version of it made by snk themselves and it's you know you stand in front of it and it has it has like fit it has like all these games on it like that they're known for and it's pretty cool. I don't own one yet because it's it's like five hundred dollars <laughs> for the stand and the console itself. But yeah, wow, yeah, that's a, I've never seen this before. That's awesome. Yeah, but art of fighting is a fighting game, and I thought I thought like art job art of fighting. Maybe you played it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, art of fighting. I've never. Yeah, it looks like a like a Street Fighter type game. Yeah, the the only thing the only thing that I have against the game is that the fir- in the first one when you're going back and forth from away from your opponent or when you or when you and the opponent are get far away from each other and getting close to each other, the camera zooms in and out in and out from how far and close you are. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it's one of those those old school games. But that but like all three of them are pretty good, though. I mean, I played all three of them, and the third one's my favorite, but all three of them had their perks. Interesting. Yeah, I'll have to try to find, like, a ROM hack or something of it and look into that. Interesting. I've never heard of that. Yeah, or get that. Get into that meme craze. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, like, be- besides now you discovering the wonderful world of Neo Geo... <laughs> What, what do you what do you what do you currently play like what, what is your forte um well i'm i've been really on the new call of duty zombies game so i've been playing a lot of xbox and 
Call of Duty lately, and they're supposed to come out with some some type of new big battle system, which I'm kind of interested in. But um, I've always been a fan of Mario, Mario Karts, Mario 64, um, Donkey Kong. I still play my Nintendo 64, mm-hmm. um, and my girlfriend's got a Switch, so we've been on. She's been showing me Animal Crossing. I never, never had any idea of Animal Crossing, and then we got it. She got me into it, and I just, I, I was like, wow, there's so much. I mean, obviously, being a fan of art, like I was like, this is so expansive. I thought it was just like a small, small, tiny game, and it's really wild how, how much, how far that game's come. But yeah, um, I, I'm a huge fan, huge fan of Kingdom Hearts. Um, and, yeah, I, I, just kind of anything that has, like, a long adventure storyline to it, I'm pretty much a fan of, or uh, a really good multiplayer system, I'm pretty much a fan of. Like, so, are you, so do you play a lot of retro consoles, too, like the Super Nintendo and the Genesis and stuff like that, too? P- PS2? I had a Super Nintendo, had a PS2, had the original PlayStation, um... I didn't hop to the PS3. I didn't ever have a Sega Genesis, um, but I had almost every single one of the old school Game Boys, Game Boy Advance, SP, the DS. Um, yeah, I was kind of surprised that I didn't get the the Switch initially um, when it came out. But once, yeah, once I figured out that that was like an actual <laughs> full on system, that kind of be- became apparent to me <laughs> that that should be something that you're hopping on. Um, but yeah, I, I I would say that I'm probably the most consistent on my Xbox, um, Xbox One, and then probably like old school Nintendo 64. Have to say that after that. Yeah, because because like you know, because you know you've probably seen this before. People like there's people who take like their old consoles and they think like oh that's just too bland, and then they just art it up like they. <laughs> You know? Yeah, yeah. My, uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because my, so my girlfriend is an artist and she knows somebody who has, ta- the, he has the ability to take old school Game Boys and old uh, Game Boy Advance and systems like that, and he remods them to have like a backlit uh, lighting system and a USB charger port and you know a headphone jack and everything like that, and then. He'll fix them up, turn them into like a good modded system like that, and then she'll paint them, and they'll come out to like just these immaculate, like hand drawn, painted, and then custom Game Boys. And it's really, so it's really funny that you you mentioned that because that's something that she just recently, in the past three, four, five months, has gotten into. So are are you into that though? Or are you like I, I like my console, or I like my consoles and all my gaming stuff to be how they were and how I remember them? Or, or, or do you think that's really cool and you jump on that bandwagon? <laughs> um, up and up until uh, up until my girlfriend started doing it, I wasn't really the biggest fan. Um, and even of like wraps on your system, I I thought that they were pretty cool, but I just thought that they were like like the Halo ones and stuff like that. I could I could get into the ones that were more artistic, but like the ones that just like change change the color on your system, I kind of diluted from but uh once i started seeing not just my girlfriend but other artists like if you look on youtube you can see like these crazy artists like making these like hand painted like custom crazy systems i was like this is <laughs> this is i'm hopping on this bandwagon yeah for sure i mean but that, that also leads that but with that being said what i just leads to this to a, to a great question um what from the artists that you like, from the artists that you know and you like and you support and all that, um, what would you like to see from them that they haven't done before? Ooh, that's a, that's hard because I've seen I've seen artists do puzzles and posters, clothing, um I've seen them put a, put their artwork on lighters before, and like phone cases and, um, but I I think it would be really cool to see, 
one of the artists that I follow or have been following for quite a while, um, because l like we were talking about, um, I haven't really gotten into the actual artists of video games and, you know, like shows that I've seen and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But then I, th I think it would be really cool if, you know, one of the artists that I do follow did get one of, you know, their pieces, like, animated or put into, you know, a video game or, like, something like that would, that I could, you know, actually play because I think that would be, you know, really interesting. I've seen a few artists um, put, like, their artwork in, like, music videos before but never, like, a fully animated, like, actual character. Um, the closest thing I think we've gotten to is probably, like, a physical toy of a piece of artwork that they've painted before, so they've taken that that painting and turned it into a physical object, which uh, up until uh, probably two years ago, I didn't even know that that was a possibility, and when I saw the first artist doing that, I was like, this is something that I really want, because it takes you back. It's like you're like a kid again collecting toys, but then you're collecting, you know, your favorite piece of artwork at the same time, so... Um, yeah, I think video games would probably be something that I would I would think is really cool for some of the artists, you know, to get their stuff into. Mm -hmm. So like, so like, it, I, I don't know if you, I, I'm, it's now I'm interested. Is there anything that you wanted to that you've been, that you've been willing you wanted to know about about me or the podcast or anything that you want to ask me uh, down down the line? Um. Well, I guess we. Well, I, I know that you see my channel, um, and I know that you collect pins. But did you just did you just stumble upon my channel, or have you seen me on like some art pages? Or I guess I was curious, maybe how, because I've I've ran into people before, and they're like, I think I've seen you before, you know. But it's always interesting to see how people, you know, came across the channel or the artwork. No, how no how I came across to you was that um was I was um you know. I was I was trying to, like I was I was just sitting around and you know I was trying and and like I want and I was trying to find ways of how I could ship something and do it without like going to the post office or jumping through a bunch of fruit jump through a bunch of hoops and whatever and so I I was like I wonder if YouTube has anything that I, I, I like and then obviously I got like if I need to find out something it's either Google or YouTube. <laughs> right, and so so I'll go on YouTube and I just I just start typing in how to ship something from your own house or something around that line, and, right? And a bunch of videos came up of like I'm like oh how the like this is like blah, this is how you ship this is how you ship and then your video popped up and I was like I was like let's check this out and then, and then I click on the video and <laughs> start explaining it and everything and and then and then when you and then you, when you're describing it and then. And then when you were talking about like oh just putting eight pounds and anything higher is more and I was like maybe I should make like like I trust this guy and what he's saying and everything <laughs> like when it comes to the scaling I should probably get this right <laughs> so, right yeah so that's what, so that's when I found the nerd video of some of someone actually explaining how the how to scale it properly and what to properly put in and all that stuff but everything else I learned from your video <laughs> wow yeah that's really awesome I mean. Yeah, we were chatting a little bit before the, the podcast started, but like I said, yeah, that's probably m my most popular video, and it's crazy. I I uploaded that, like I said, because I was trying to help out the people who consistently ask me, and not that I mind in any way, shape, or form people asking me, because I love sharing the info, but it was just like, if I if I post this up, then I can just send them the link and then I never really have to, you know, try to type it all out or explain it to them. Um, and so it's, I never in my wildest dreams would have ever imagined that I would have a video that had a hundred thousand views or, you know, 3000 likes or whatever it has on it. And I like all the people just like, I'll sign into my Google account on a random day and I'll see that I have a comment on that video and it's, thank you so much for your help. This was so easy. This is the best. And it just, it, that alone just makes me feel so, so good to be able to see that I'm like helping people out on something that I 
didn't even like I I didn't intend it for you know that many people to see it so it's just like really and I I try anytime people comment on my videos I try to respond to them right away and you know that's probably the most that I get questions on because I I've gotten actually that same question that you wanted to know you know how do I know exactly what the weight is or you know stuff like that so I've had to stay super consistent on that video but it's just like yeah like I said I, it's wild to think that that many people have been helped out by that video that I <laughs> just uploaded a few years ago and and you know just so crazy to think yeah me 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 one day you can do like a an update with the with like if you actually go ahead and buy the scale you can probably do an update video on it and actually like do like oh you and, and then like you add the scale in the video and you say oh, you got to round up and all that yeah yeah i have a lot of people asking me uh what they do if they don't have a printer, <laughs> and uh, which is like kind of crazy, and I, I I don't mean to laugh at them, but to me um, it seems kind of obvious that you should just kind of have a printer to do that. But there is an easy, super easy solution to it, and I've told a lot of people on, on in the comments, and I think a lot of people have have gotten the help from that and figured it out. But you can easily just you know send the label to any FedEx or anywhere that's nearby. And obviously if it's, you know, if you're in your position, you're not nearby like a FedEx or something like that. But mm -hmm. if you don't have a printer, you can easily just send it to a FedEx or a UPS or something and they'll print it right there for you. And then you can, you know, ship your package without having to actually ship it through the company itself. So, um, yeah, that's, it's cool to be able to, you know, help, help people out like that and get them the info that they need. Because, dude, do you know how do you know how satisfying it was when I went through that whole process? Print out the label, cut it up, put it on the thing, taped it on there, put it in the mailbox, and it got sent, and they actually made it to the sender. And, I, and do you know how nice that felt? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I know exactly that feeling, and a lot of people will say, "Man, this is the easiest thing." I like, yeah, a lot of people, it's it's a lot easier than you think, and once you learn it then you know it forever and it makes life a, a, a lot easier. But just, but just like in the video, always remember, always have bubble wrap. <laughs> always <laughs> have bubble wrap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, the, the more protection you can have on the things that you're sending, the, the better it's going to be. Like I, I was scrolling through these Facebook pages earlier and somebody posted, saying how they shipped a print, and it was a $2,000 print, and they were just so dead on how you should probably ship prints in two tubes instead of just one in case that, you know, the mail damages it or whatever. So mm -hmm. obviously you don't want to overweigh your packages or, like, make them too much weight, but as much protection as you can do is going to gonna get the job done the best. So so here, so here's the thing I want to know. I, now, in the video, obviously, you were showing us how to do it, but... When, but were you were you actually mailing a legit product to a legit somebody in the video, or <laughs> did you make that all up? Just for the video? Secrets out. <laughs> the secret is out. No, I, I wasn't shipping anything. Actually, it was it was a video idea that I had for a, a little while, and um, I just thought, heck, I'm I'm just gonna do it. I don't have anything to ship, but I'm I'm just gonna you know throw something together. So if you <laughs> if you look in the video, obviously I don't want everybody seeing my you know address, and I try to blur it all out. But if you look in the video, it says uh, the the shipping address is the same as the return address. Yeah. So it's it's being sent to the same person. <laughs> so no, I never actually ended sending sending that package out. <laughs> Well, well, thanks for spending your thanks for spending your three dollars for the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. Uh, and if that ever happens, uh, and you don't want to spend the money, you can just end up voiding out the label. <laughs> I don't think I made it in time. I think I ended up editing editing the video and forgetting to void out the label. So I think I did end up spending money on it. <laughs> So like, but how? But like, after you made that video, or even before you made that video, how many times did you use that process? Um, I had I had probably been shipping stuff out for about a year before I I gave out my secrets to everybody. <laughs> and 
And then let's uh, and, but then you still use it to this day, no matter how big or how small the package is, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, well, there's been a few packages where um, I I knew that the weight was going to be too big on it, and so then obviously I have to. That's out of my control, and I have to take that to like an actual UPS store. But yeah, I've been s- sticking to that process ever since, and I actually just ended up using it <laughs> today to ship out a package. So that's cool. it's still the same. Yeah. Yeah, because I know on the website they give you the option for envelope or small or just regular package, and then they give you the option of a large package. Yeah, um, it's it, it can get kind of confusing there, but um, they tr- they try to do their best to explain whether or not you have. Most of the time, it's just like a thinner envelope, or if you have if if it's a large package, it's just like something big, like a you know, like something microwave box size or something like that, you know, like a decent size package. Mm-hmm. But yeah, man, I mean, like we've been doing, we've been doing this for an hour. <laughs> oh, wow. Doesn't even seem like it. Time flies. Yeah. But, but like, dude, we had so much fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, I, I didn't expect it. Like I said, I, I didn't know, uh, where you had, known me from a lot of people know me from like the pin pages or the art pages that i'm on and stuff like that so it's it's really really actually cool that you saw my youtube channel and reached out to me through that way so i really appreciate it and i i appreciate you having me on today yeah i mean like i mean we could talk about the about the pins and how many you have and all of that and how much artwork you have and all that stuff which which i mean I guess we should. I guess we can. Act, I can ask that before we close it out. Um, how much? How much art and how many pins and how much just art things do you have? Um, <laughs> pin wise, uh, I probably have close to maybe a thousand pins, and you can see that in in my videos. <laughs> I I do a pretty decent job, I think, of trying to show off most of them. Um, but yeah, pins I would say are probably my most collectible item um so i've i've been collecting those for the longest and uh probably about six years like i said my painting came short after that so and paintings take up a heck of a lot more room than small tiny pins do so i try to collect as as minimal paintings as i can but uh i would say shirts um clothing and pins are probably my most collected item and um not not to boast about money about it, but it, I, I have spent c- quite a bit on it, and I'm not very proud of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but obviously, the uh, the artwork sometimes it's kind of like stocks, where sometimes it appreciates in value and sometimes it decreases in value. So, but regardless, I I like to try to just buy things that I would enjoy, regardless of if it goes up or down in value. So that way, I I'm always a fan of it and I always like it. So, um. I I would say that I am trying to slow down <laughs> that spending process right now. <laughs> yeah. So so like, would you be willing to trade any of the pins for a pin that you want, or and what and what have you done with the original pin or pins that you started out with, like at the very all those years ago? Uh, the original pin, I still have that. I still have that original gifted pin. Um, that has probably way too much sentimental value to me to be able to ever get away from that pin. Also, it's not really an artist pin, so it's not worth a whole lot, so it's not really worth getting rid of at this point. Mm-hmm. But, but, I'm say, but I'm saying, like, if... I'm saying, like, if... Like, when you're looking... At, I mean, obviously you keep that one because that one means a lot to you. But, like, for, like, your whole thousand some pins that you have, if if you see one that, like... If you're, like see one that you really, really want and you don't have it, would you be willing to let the trade, like, one of your pins for, like, the pin you really, really want? <laughs> or, like... Yep. Yeah, I'm actually, uh, currently, as we're speaking, I mean, I'm not on my phone doing it, <laughs> but I'm in the process of trying to, uh, collect... There's, there's an artist, Little Sam Art, mm-hmm. and he does these really cool... Like, he'll take one character, uh, for example, he has, like, a Pikachu... But then inside of that Pikachu, he has all different types of Pokemon that make up the Pikachu. So it's like the shape of a Pikachu, but it has Blastoise and you know Charizard. Every all the all the Pokemon inside of it. So yeah. 
he has that with different characters. He's done it with Dragon Ball Z and um, Jack Skeleton from Disney and stuff like that, where they all have different characters inside of them. Well, I am not the biggest fan of, or as big of a fan as Dragon Ball Z as I am as Mario, and he just recently did a Nintendo Mario pin where it's Mario and inside of it is Yoshi and Luigi and all the different Nintendo characters, and so I've been trying really, really, really hard to trade this Dragon Ball Z Goku pin for this Mario pin, but it's it's it been kind of a challenge to try to hunt it down because so many people like this Mario pin. So there's there's sometimes where I'm able to find pins for other pins that I'm not as huge of fans of, but there's been a couple of times where I've had to let go of pins that I've had for years and years and years to acquire another piece of artwork that I would think I would enjoy much more. So it that that is probably I would say the hardest thing about collecting artwork is either missing a piece of artwork that you really want and then having to try to acquire it or just you know getting rid of the pieces that y- y- you really like because it means you know trying to acquire that other piece some way. Yeah, like 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 you you got you got to be like that guy on the street with the with the trench coat and be like, "Hey kid, <laughs> Come look at my pins. Which one do you want? Yeah. <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah. Oh man. Well, hey man. Um, let me do my outro. And I'll let you do yours. Um, okay. I want to thank everyone for listening to episode 138 of Cyber Time Bite. This has been a blast. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Cyber Time Bite. Um, you can find me on Twitter. At Nostalgia Vamp. Um, you can find me, you can find my merchandise at redbubble.com under Crash Steven Gear, where you can buy my t shirt with the spork on it. Um, it is an art piece, but I didn't draw the hand in the spork. It, a friend of mine, I paid a friend to make it. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but needless, it's an artwork that you can wear. And, and, and you can, you can buy it now. Um, something I didn't make. Uh, I, it wasn't hand drawn or anything. It's digital art. I just took pieces and put them together, and boom, there it is. But um, but you, still art. I guess you can call it art. Um, <laughs> you can go. You can go to teespring dot com, and and go this and go to the circus stuck page on teespring dot com and buy the all famous circus stuck shirt that everyone is clamoring to have when I tell them about it. And you can you can go buy it on there, and you can buy you know, a poster and all that stuff. Same with my Spork stuff. You can get everything. You, do you know, believe it or not, you can get my Spork logo on a shower curtain if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> that's, if, that's if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can, you can go on there, buy my Spork stuff, buy the Circus stuff, Circus Stuck stuff. Um, go to, go to my, you can find me in, on Instagram at Nostalgia Vampire, uh, do that and you can have fun doing all that stuff. Um, and for you, where can people find your lovely, lovely content? Uh, obviously where you found me on YouTube at Art Trap. uh, they can find me on Instagram. I like to post, you know, different pieces of artwork that I find and different clips of YouTube on Instagram. So if you want to check out, you know, my personal, if it's on Instagram there and, uh, you can also find me on Facebook. I don't really post as much on my Facebook group. So the most you're going to find me is on YouTube and Instagram at art drop. And, uh, yeah, I I would love to be back on this, this podcast again sometime and talk about those topics that we never got to talk about. So I, I really enjoyed it and I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. Hey, no problem, man. I would love to have you back. I think it would be really great. Um, so, if that so that so that so that includes it then. Um, thank you everyone for listening, and I hope all of you have a fantastic day. Have a good one. Thanks.